Anyone hear that? <laughs> Seahorse Whisperer said, this would be super cool if you could just start dancing around and pretend we're nuts because everything else can, everyone else can hear it. Can I add subtitles? No, I'm not going to be typing out this conversation. All right, so we're back to the regular microphone. I was trying to do something cool and different. That thing didn't. Weirdly, though, it showed it was connected. It showed it was receiving, but for some reason, you weren't getting it. I don't know why. Okay, so I've got some topics for you guys today. First things first, we'll switch this to here, and we will turn on this title for today. And while I'm waiting for everyone to catch up with me, also I'm going to... You know, this window right now that I'm on actually works okay. Normally I'm in a different part of YouTube to watch the stream, but I don't know that I need to. So I'm going to skip that, and I'm going to start working on my list. So, today's topic, number one, did you guys check out the new website? Did you love it? I only accept compliments. <laughs> so... Have you been to MilosReef.com yet to check it out through your mobile device or through your desktop? I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, of course, if there's problems, tell me, but I'd prefer to only hear great things because it's been a work in progress for so long, for so long, that at this point I only want to hear good things. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's uh, Actually, there are a couple little minor things. Uh, I had someone send me a message saying that the dates are covering some of the titles. I've asked the developer to remove the dates over the articles. Also, if there's a blog entry that doesn't have a picture at the top, then it automatically is going to put a date on top of the title until I can get those pictures added. So there is that. But as far as I know, all the reports are cleaned up and there are no more um, error 404s. I think we have squashed every last one of those, which means no matter what you Google if uh, it's ever existed on Milo's Reef, it will take you to the right page on the website, I hope. All right. Let's uh, go to the next topic. I wanted to ask you guys about Black Friday because you guys love to type in the background while I'm talking, and I wanted to know what you got this year for Black Friday, preferably for your aquarium, but you know what? Brag away. I get it. I spent my Black Friday and my Thanksgiving working on the website, so I actually didn't go shopping at all other than to get some vegetables to cook with my food. So that's as exciting as I got over here this year. I can ditch the new microphone topic because that didn't work. We'll put a minus by that one. I did install the NO3 uh, nitrate reducing brick. So that is now in my sump. I did a blog about it and I explained what I've done so far. So feel free to try, uh, you know, to get a little bit of knowledge about that. Obviously, the review is going to take some time. I'm expecting it to be six to eight weeks before I see any kind of change whatsoever. But of course, every week I will test my nitrate level and see where the numbers are or where they're heading. And we'll see if this brick does its, what it's supposed to do. I posted about it in the saltwater group that I'm involved in, and I asked people, you know, what are your experiences? And a lot of people were, you know, on that conversation. A lot of people were unhappy with this particular brand and said that it had collapsed into mush. Well, I've heard from the actual um, uh, the manufacturer that they had a bad run of bricks a year ago, and maybe these all these people are those same people last year that tried it out when it first came out. But bottom line, they said it collapsed. It, you know, it just went to mush and made a big mess. So if for some reason you have such a brick and it has collapsed in your sump, my advice would be to you know, turn off your pumps and get out a shop vac and suck up that area to remove the entire mess. Um, but I, th I think the brick is not supposed to dissolve into a pile. I think it's supposed to become mushy, maybe, you know, spongy, but still something you could remove at some point. I want to know if it's going to uh, adversely affect livestock. Of course, you know, I would, I would like to think it will not. One person was uh, going into some conversations about barium rising, aluminum being an issue. So these are things that only an ICP test can measure for. And an ICP test is when you measure, uh, when you send in your water to a lab and they blast it. I mean, 
I, I just picture this nuclear warhead going off. And then all that's left are the elements. You know, the water's completely obliterated. And you get this entire report of your tank water, which I've never done. So probably what I should do is do an ICP test right now with the tank water. And then in about eight weeks, do another ICP test and see if anything changed from this brick being in my system. But I would love to think that it will remove the nitrate. And that's exactly what it says on the, on the uh, instructions. It is designed to reduce and lower your nitrate. Now, I don't want to go too negative because I don't know. I mean, that's why I'm using it. That's why I'm doing a review. And I want to give you guys insight too and what my experience is. But I do want to say that I had a couple of people told me they put the brick in their system and it pulled the nitrates down just like they expected. And that's exactly what I would hope. So is it something you only would want to use once a year maybe? Like your nitrates went up really crazy high and this is your, <clears throat> your safety net, your, your method of bringing them down to where they're controllable again. Is it something that you should have in your tank at all times? Is it something that can or cannot handle a lot of direct flow? Like for example, could it be in the area of your sump where the water crashes in? Or is it better in a more lesser, uh, I don't want to use the word stagnant, but in a more calm area of the sump. These are some of the things that I'd like to know the answers to, especially when they come up in the future, so I can say yes or no, or this is the best way to handle it. So that is going to be a topic, obviously, that we'll be developing, and I'll get into it later. Uh, regarding water testing, I mentioned, have you guys gotten the Reef Trace app yet? Reef Trace is an app for iOS. They are starting right now to work on the Android version, and they'll be working on it all through December, and it probably will come out in the first week of January. The, uh, the app is already on, a, I believe, its fourth or fifth update, which means whoever's going to get it for Android will get it with all the updates already in it. And if there's a sixth or a seventh update, then, again, you will get everything in your version that we have been watching grow and evolve inside our version. So, you know, calm down. It's coming. It's going to take a little time. I uh, did some update. I actually uh, put in all my parameters last week. Um, I think it was three days ago and shared them to Instagram. So if you have not been to my Instagram, please go over to it now and I want you to check it out and you can, <clears throat> you can see the numbers that I posted. You'll get this graph at the top and as you add more and more elements, you'll see a chart, basically uh, a graph of the experience of how your water parameters are doing. And you can actually pick, like, I just want to see alkalinity and watch alkalinity. I just want to see calcium and see what al calcium did. I just want to see pH you know, and what pH did. And you can put in these different elements. The, uh, the different sections of the app, especially in water testing, has grown bigger and bigger. They've added more and more things you could test for. And I don't mean just, uh, uh, you know, ELOS or Red Sea. That, and I'm like, I don't mean brands. I mean literally the tests. So when you get your ICP result, you could actually enter in every single thing that they found or most of everything they found. Uh, some things I don't think half of us even care about. But they are definitely going in depth with these tests. The, uh, <clears throat> the vendor section is uh, filling out now in Reef Trace. So uh, for example, you'll see things for sale from Milo's Reef when you go to the marketplace or the plaza. I always call it the wrong name. So you can check that out. I will be releasing a video very soon showing you how the app works. I've shown you like on the stream a little bit, but I like to actually go through the steps. And I've also asked Emasis to give me a, uh, a video of their using it on an iPhone 10. So I should be getting that sometime soon, and I can release it. All right, that's enough intro. I think by now everyone's here that was supposed to be here. So let me jump into the topic, which is what to do when you're going to travel, and you've got a reef tank, and you're worried about what's going to happen. Now, right before I jump to that, I want to... I am going to switch this to my normal way of watching the stream, because it shows me the stream health. Right before I started the stream, my computer was acting very slow, so I restarted everything, and I restarted the modem, and I restarted the uh, the router, and then it said, cannot connect to the internet. I said, oh my god, I broke it. <laughs> so here we go. Um, now I'm where I want to be. Oh, one more thing about Reef Trace. The app is on sale until it's on sale today, tomorrow, and Monday. It ends on Cyber Monday. So it is for uh, $5.99 right now, which is a little bit less than what it was before. So you guys that are that have been on the fence, now is your chance to get it and save a few bucks. So 
uh, I hope that uh, some of you will jump on that. Okay, stream health is good. We got a green light. Let's get into the topic. All right, so you're wanting to travel and you are, you've got, I'm going to put this back on the screen here. You're wanting to travel. You have got your, your trip planned. You know you're going to be gone three days, five days, seven days. You went to go see family. Or you might not be traveling. What if it's an emergency? What if it's a hospital stay? And you've got to go stay in the hospital for a few days for a surgery that you cannot avoid, for example. And so now what you're asking is your spouse or you're asking a significant other, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, if they can watch the tank. But you know they're not going to watch the tank the way you watch your tank. They, they don't understand all the nuances. So what do they need to know to keep your tank alive while you're gone? That's what this list comes down to. So, you know, here is a word cloud that I put together last night showing some of the things that I consider important when it comes to keeping your tank alive. But the bottom line is, obviously, you want power to get to that tank the entire time that you're away. And that would actually be asking your tank sitter to go the extra mile to keep the power going. For example, if you had a power outage do your pumps automatically come on because they have a battery backup? Or are you asking your tank sitter to pull out a generator, run an extension cord to your aquarium, pull the rope until the generator starts, and stay at your house until the power restores? <laughs> That's a lot to ask of a tank sitter. I uh, got a text from my Apex controller during one of my trips. It was 2 in the morning, and it said the power is out. And I debated, do I call the tank sitter at 2 a.m. and say, hey, guess what? The power's out of my house. Could you please go over there and make sure my reef is okay? I decided not to do that. I <laughs> it just seemed like I'm going to let this one ride out for a little while because all my Vortec pumps on my entire system, on all my tanks, have battery backups. And a Vortec pump is a pump by Ecotech. It's the pump I've been using since, I think, 2006, 2007. And every single one of those pumps has a battery connected to it that will keep those pumps circulating water in the display tank for 12 hours or more, uh, possibly as much as 24. Now, if I was at home and the power went out, I would, within an hour, hour and a half, I would go ahead and get the generator fired up and get everything running because I want all the water to circulate throughout the entire tank. And <clears throat> the reason for that is because the water sitting in the sump being stagnant and the water sitting in the overflow boxes being stagnant it's not going to be good for your tank when the power comes back on. Also, the heaters are located in the sump, and of course there's no power, so there's no heat whatsoever. But you might have water <clears throat> still, well, you know, pretty much all the water should stay the same temperature in all zones, but the longer it goes, the more things are going to start shifting based on ambient temperatures in the home. Okay, so we're going a little very, we're going far out. I, I, let me rein it back in. Tank sitter. Your tank sitter may or may not be able to run a generator. But maybe you can show them some things they could do. Maybe you could keep it simpler, like a, a bubbler, for example. Let's say they knew there was a power outage in the area, and, or, or they live in the same house, and so you know your tanks are going to be a family member, right? They would know, install this bubbler on your tank, and it's running with batteries, and it just puts air, uh, air stone in the tank, and it adds some oxygen. And then, of course, they would call you and give you the heads up. That would be what you'd want your tank sitter to do. When it comes to top off, <clears throat> this is an interesting area to consider as well because you want your water to keep, um, keep the same salinity. And when you use an automated top off system, you have made this job easier for yourself and of course for anyone that's watching your tank. In essence, they shouldn't have to even worry about it at all. But let's say you have a small top off container that can top off your tank for about three days. You know, maybe there's three to five gallons of water in there, and that's enough for three days, but you're going to be gone for five or six days. You could have a top of container right there in front of your aquarium or near it, and you show it to the tank sitter and say, here is the water that is added. The only water that goes inside this container is this jug right here. You don't get water from the sink. You don't get water from the bathtub. You don't get water from the garden hose. You only use this jug of water right here, and you might even mark that container, aquarium, fresh water only, or some kind of message so there's no confusion 
If you have one that says water changes only on the side of the jug and your tank sitter sees it, they may not know what to do with that. So make sure everything is labeled appropriately for this trip. So you can, you know, here's your top of container. Here is your extra water for the top of container. You can tell the tank sitter in three days, this container is going to be empty. I need you to take this jug, only this jug and no other jug and pour this into this container and everything's automated from that point forward. You could also, like in the case of mine, I have what's called the smart ATO still hooked up to my system. And when it fails, which means it, it just detects a problem and starts, uh, it stops itself from running, it beeps. And so I tell my tank setter, if you come in and you hear a beeping sound, unplug this specific cord and then plug it back in and that will reset it. So you've told your tank setter, this is the only water we're using. And if you hear a beeping sound, I want you to unplug it and plug this in. Funny coincidence, I don't know if you could hear that way over there, but that beeping was my coffee maker saying it turned itself off. That was not my tank uh, aligning perfectly with this conversation. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, top off. Here's something, I, I've got kind of a cool story for you. My buddy moved to New Jersey, and before he officially moved, he went there to uh, you know apply for the job, to see how the job would work out, and he ended up staying there for three weeks straight. <clears throat> So what he did before he left was he, he had a small tank. I think it's a 27-gallon all-in-one system. And he, you know, had a very small top-off system. I think he was using like a 5-gallon jug officially, uh, originally. Then, for this trip, because he knew he'd be gone longer, he decided to get a 10-gallon, you know, Aquion tank, and he filled it up with RO water. And uh, he put the lid on top of it, of course. And uh, he turned up the temperature in his apartment to be warmer. So, because it was summer, he didn't want the AC running and cooling the room and increasing evaporation. So he ran his apartment at a warmer temperature while he was gone for three weeks. And he called me up and he says, Mark, I'm on my way home from the airport. How much do you want to bet uh, that my tank is, you know, going to be fine? And I, I just, I had the worst feeling in my gut for his tank. He was gone for three weeks, no one to check on his tank one time in three weeks. He had an auto feeder uh, hooked up with some flake food, you know, that flake food I love. And he had this top off with only 10 gallons of water. And I just, I just pictured the water being, you know, way down in the tank. I pictured no circulation, black, the smell of death. I mean, I just, <laughs> I just, there was no way this tank was alive. And so, he, you know, he keeps me on the phone. And he says, okay, I just got home. I was like, okay, I'll talk to you later. Let me know what happens. He goes, no, 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 no. We're going to go on FaceTime. We're going to see this together at the exact same time. And I thought, oh, God, all right, let's do this. So we, he opens the front door, and he's, you know, he's got the phone in front of him, and he walks toward the tank. The tank looks perfect. The light was on. All the livestock was happy and healthy. The top of container wasn't even empty. We, now he, he, he admitted to me after we got through this step, he admitted to me afterwards that he was sure it was all dead too, because <laughs> he didn't plan to be gone for so long. And he was just astounded that his raise in the temperature in the apartment and uh, adding that extra volume of water was just enough that, I mean, he actually could have been gone at like another week. There was a, that 10 gallons barely evaporated. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So when you're traveling, you want to make sure there's sufficient top-off water for your tank um, or a person that can replenish. Uh, you could raise the temperature in your tank a little bit. You want to be careful not to go so high that your tank will get hot under the lighting of your tank. Uh, I realize most of you probably have LEDs. I'm still old school. I use metal halides, and they put out a ton of heat. So I'm not going to raise the temperature of my house to 78 or 80 degrees because my tank would probably get 84, 85 degrees under the metal halides every day. But in his case, he had the uh, AI Prime, which is a small LED puck over this 27-gallon tank. And he, I'm, I don't know if we should say lucky or he was brilliant, but either way, the tank was lucky because it did well considering he was gone that entire time. For my tank, my rule is the tank sitter has to come by every single day. And I've had that rule in place forever. And really, all I want them to do is put in the frozen food. That's the only job I want them to do. And if there's anything else wrong, I want them to contact me and let me know what they see. You know, I want them to be my eyes and ears when they walk in the door. That's what I want. 
And, you know, hopefully I hear nothing. And they were, you know, they just walked in, they fed, everything looked fine, they left. So let's talk about food. For food on a trip, what I, I don't like to do is I don't like to just say, here's the food, you're going to put this much in. That's too vague, especially for anyone you're asking to help with your tank. Because if there's a jar of flake food or there's a jar of pellet food, they may decide to just keep feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding. Now, they might put in a whole bunch or that doesn't look like enough. So instead, I recommend that you get little tiny containers. I like to steal them <laughs> from the, uh, <laughs> I should finish that sentence, right? Before someone cuts it out and says, we're going to use this. Uh, these little containers you get at places like uh, Taco Cabana, um, most Tex-Mex places especially, they have these little salsa cups. Um, you, uh, maybe a thing to put jalapenos in and it's a little lid. So I like to grab like eight or ten of them and uh, just keep them in the pantry and I've had them forever. I mean, I stole them once. I did buy a meal, by the way. It wasn't like a total theft. But I did get some of these plastic cups, more than I needed that day, yes. And I will put in all the food I want for each day, put the lid, and put it in the freezer. And if you want to take it the next step further, you can write on the top of each day, you know, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That way they know which food is for which day. And the reason to do a date on the container is if you happen, if you, mine doesn't do this, but if you happen to have an absent-minded uh, tank sitter and they already fed your tank and then they're like, oh yeah, I need to feed the tank. If they reach in there and it's Monday and they look and it says Tuesday on top, like, oh, I already fed, never mind. Yes, weird things happen when you're gone. So I try to rule out all the possibilities to outwit Murphy and make sure that this is all correct. I would suggest that you show this tank sitter where the food is before they arrive. I would show them where, you know, where everything is, where all the gear is. Where is your extra pump if a pump fails? Um, I would love to make sure they understand where, how everything runs. How do I explain this properly? Okay, so I had to borrow a guy recently to help me watch my tank because my regular tank sitter was on vacation. I don't know who approved that. I definitely did not. I was very upset that he decided to leave when I needed him most. But I digress. The, the person I showed everything to, he even took notes. I felt really good about him. And I felt like it was going to be okay for those few days before my tank sitter would get back and he would take over. But things still don't stay constant in a reef tank. For example, I had a big Monty that the flow somehow or the, the big tiger cowrie flipped that coral over on top of another coral and because of the change of dynamic just from that little change the sand shifted and completely buried a chalice. Now this guy that had taken notes that was watching my tank would never know there had been a chalice in that spot. He didn't even notice that I had a coral flip over. It just, you know, it's okay. It's, I'm not mad at him. That's the kind of thing that is really hard for someone that doesn't know your tank to anticipate or to even see that's a problem that needs to be resolved. So there are chances that something you know you you like may be lost. So if you have a very favorite fish or a very favorite coral or a very favorite anemone, whatever it is, make sure you point that thing out to your tank sitter and say, this one here always looks like this. This one really matters. You know, if everything else goes to crap, as long as that one lives, we're good. <laughs> That would be a good approach because you want them to know what they're looking at. If when they look in your tank and they see a bunch of corals and they think they're all fake, that's a bad sign, right? They need to know what's going on with your, your livestock. They need to know what matters and what doesn't. Obviously, if a rock falls over, who cares? But if the rock has three very expensive corals face down in the sand, you're going to care a lot when you get back. And you're going to say, why didn't you at least let me know this rock fell or try to pick? I don't know. That's the other thing, and that's also my list. I am literally following my list, by the way. I'm not just wandering off on topics. One of the things we usually ask our tank sitters to do is keep your hands out of the tank because they might have lotions or perfumes or aftershaves or whatever on their hands. Uh, they might have just treated a dog that they, you know, their own pet with something to kill fleas, and it's on their skin, and they put their hand in your tank, and it could affect it adversely. So you want them to keep their hands out of the tank as much as possible uh, you may not even want them to clean the front glass with a cleaning magnet because they might scratch it. So these are decisions you have to make. Do you want them to do that? Do you not want them to do it? If you want them to do it, 
demonstrate exactly how to do it and explain to them how you don't want it done. Like, don't go down to the sand bed, for example, might be a piece of very important advice, especially if you own an acrylic tank. Or you might just say, you don't have to touch it. I know it's going to get cloudy. That's normal. Um, but if it smells like death, I want a phone call or a text immediately. See, that's the difference, you know, because we know good and we know okay and we know bad. The tank sitter just walks in, they're feeding your dog, they're feeding your cat, they're watering your plant, and they, they threw food in the tank and they didn't realize that everything in there was gasping for air. So you want to really communicate with them and let them know what's worst case, what's okay, uh, what's, what's great, you know, kind of bring them up to speed on that. Your phone number is important, obviously. You want them to be able to reach you. You also want them to be able to reach someone else if they can't get a hold of you. So, you know, for example, in the past I've said to uh, the tank sitter, if you can't get a hold of me, I want you to call this fish store. And I had already called the fish store in advance and talked to the owner and said, look, if there's a problem in my tank, you know, I've got somebody watching it, is it okay if this person calls you your direct number, you know, your private number for assistance over the phone? And the tank, and then the fish store owner would say, of course, that's fine. And then I would give them that number or I'd post it on the fridge or something obvious so that way they'd have it. I also like to have towels ready. So I, you know, we've got the food in the freezer. We've got a pile of towels right by the tank that are okay for them to use because you know they don't have something weird in them. You know, they haven't been dipped in downy <laughs> or any of the other weird things that we you know, normally do with our regular towels. But we have the fish towels. They never get soap on them or, or something like that. We want to make sure they understand that's safe to use. If you have a proficient tank sitter that can actually do water tests for you, you might actually say, hey, I need you to check alkalinity each day. <laughs> My tank sitter has to do that for me a lot. And uh, when the dose comes, um, did I say dose? When the uh, Triton comes out, that's going to measure alkalinity automatically, that will make him so much happier. Because invariably, when I go on these trips, he even I just text him because I'm going on a trip you know, uh, next week. And I told him, I, uh, I just did such and such. And he, he's always like, what are you going to change right before you leave town? And see, that's the next point on my list. Don't change things on your tank before you leave town. And I'm saying that while I smile because I am the worst at this. I really try hard to follow my own advice. But this is a living, breathing tank and things happen over here and my schedule is erratic. So, yes, there are times where I will not change something. For example, I may not change the lighting, even though I have to do a lighting review, on a tank because I know I'm about to travel. And I don't want to change the lights and leave town and have something strange happen with that light fixture. So that will wait. But I might be futzing around with the uh, calcium reactor, and it affects, of course, alkalinity and calcium in the reef tank. And so my tank said, Mark, what did you do? How did you leave me this time? So I actually did all of that equipment uh, changes last week I leave next week they gave it about 10 to 14 days before I leave town where I can tweak anything and not put it on him but that being said because he's very intelligent and he knows how to do water tests he knows how to deal with the calcium reactor he can make any changes or literally like rebuild it he did that once and he sent me a text okay I took it all apart and fixed it and I was just, you know a surprise that he would even tackle that when I was tank sitting for one guy uh, that was traveling he uh, said, all you have to do is this, this, and this. And I went over there, and I, I looked at his tanks as if they were my own, and I felt like they could be better. And so I spent an entire day cleaning every pump in his tank. And what I mean is I took the pump out of the water, and I put it in vinegar, and I let it soak, and I worked on something else. And then I took that pump apart, and I cleaned it, and then I installed it, and I went to the next pump, and I did it everywhere. I cleaned all his pumps. And I got a text from him the next day saying, what did you do to my tank? And I said, I cleaned your pumps. I thought you'd be happy. And he said, yeah, but now there's all this flow in my tank and my sand is going everywhere. And I said, well, turn them down. But his, tank, his pumps are so clogged up, that's why I cleaned them. Well, yeah, by cleaning them, you're going to have increased flow, which is good for the corals, but it could shift your sand bed. So, uh, you know, if you are going to be uh, helpful, try to anticipate what your help will do. Same with the tank sitter. Uh, you want the tank sitter to be just helpful enough, but not so helpful that they ruin anything. Okay. Last thing. Oh, if you have a controller like I do, you can check on your tank uh, parameters 
by just opening up your phone. And, you know, in my case, I look at Apex Fusion, and I see tank temperature, and I can see that things are flowing. Uh, I actually have, like I said, it'll send me a text if my, uh, my tank loses power. It sends me a text if my skimmer turns off because the waste collector is full. Oh, that's another one. Uh, it was not on my list. Uh, the cleaning of the skimmer. If you can get your tank sitter to clean your skimmer, you uh, probably need to give them a raise. <laughs> the, uh, the skimmer is, of course, the most vile job of our reef tank. But when it's overflowing like a volcano, someone's got to clean it up. You know, someone's got to clean up the mess, or you're going to have a mess everywhere. So uh, you can explain how that's done. I, ideally, you should really clean your skimmer uh, the day before you leave town. You know, clean the collection cup, clean the neck, um, get it restarted, of course, you know, for the next 12 hours or so, make sure everything's fine, and then go. I would not leave a collection cup that's half full of muck and then go away for six days and not expect something to go wrong, which would be that all that crap ends up back in your reef tank and ruining the water parameters. So I would say, I would say that. Oh, Andrew pointed out Trident. Yep, said the wrong name. I've got... Triton on my brain because the ICP test, Trident, is to measure alkalinity. If you have a webcam in your house, you can check on your tank that way visually. Um, if you haven't gotten a webcam yet, you could. Uh, I saw a really good deal on one on Amazon. It was four different cameras for like 100 bucks, and it worked with their app. So it was not like a webcam you share with the world. It would be a, a local webcam only with that only works with this app, you know, with your login. And it would let you just check on your phone and see if your filter socks are overflowing, see if your uh, skimmer is overflowing, see if your tank is moving, if the fish are moving across like they should, that kind of thing. These are some of the things that I would recommend. If you cannot find a tank sitter at all, if you have no one you can turn to, you could talk to the fish store and see if they have maintenance people that can check on your tank for you each day for a fee. Um, you also could try, like my buddy did, and just leave town and hope for the best. I'm just not willing to do that. There's just too much going on here for me to just assume the tank will be fine. I am, as I told you guys last week, next weekend, or actually in uh, five days, I'm getting on a plane. I'm heading to Fiji. I'm going there for a wedding and for scuba diving and for a video to show you guys on YouTube. And when I do that, I will be gone for a total of eight days. And so my tank sitter comes by eight times in a row. And each day he does that, and that keeps the tank healthy, and he will deal with whatever is going on. Part of the benefit of me running a business that sells aquarium supplies is if he needs anything, I likely have it in stock, and he can replenish whatever is lacking. But I'm hoping that his job will be turn on the RO system to replenish the top-off container and to put food in each day. And that's about it. That's my hope. I hope that nothing weird happens while I'm gone. Now, in all this talk, I have kind of ignored the chat, so I hope that you've been typing things the whole time that I can go review and maybe answer some questions that you may have thought of during my little presentation here. Okay, uh, back to the brick that I mentioned at the beginning of this, uh, this uh, live stream. Seahorse Whisperer says that she's got the brick in her uh, 90 and that it's working really well. The, she says she has a lot of zeros for the last six months and that it's in a low flow area. Brazil says hi. <laughs> Brazil. <laughs> and Dave, you say that the video and the audio are out of sync. That's possible. I switched microphones at the beginning because we were having problems. John M says you have a biopellet reactor. Why are you using the brick? Well, my nitrates are up, and I want to see if the brick will bring them down. Brant says, I prefer metal halide, as do I. I have metal halides, and I have the ReefBright XHOs to replace my VHOs. Nancy Campbell says, you can buy these condiment cups from Amazon and says stealing them like Milev. She said you can buy a whole bunch and then share them with your friends. See, Nancy's a good person. I, I, I'm going to tell you, well, I might take a few extra condiment cups while I'm at the fast food place. My buddy filled his pockets with them as well. <laughs> and I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm getting more for you. <laughs> so I ended up with twice as many. Um, Kay Miller says you can get them at the dollar store for a buck. 
Okay, all right, all right. Well, then you don't have to go to a fast food if you don't. You know, if you want to go buy them legitimately, go ahead. Uh, Black Book Productions asks, if you don't have anyone in your area, um, what would be an appropriate amount of money to pay? Uh, it really, you'll have to find out what they offer, like what the fish store charges you for such a uh, visit. It probably would be somewhere around between $25 and $40 a visit. So that would be my guess. And Ellery Wong, that's exactly what I said. Don't tweak things before you leave town. If you can get everything on autopilot a week in advance, and then it's just running fine, then all you're doing is cleaning your skimmer really quick the day before, that's it. Um, that would be my recommendation. I would not install a brand new return pump right before you leave town. I would not install a brand new type of heater. You know, you know the things that are going to make a big difference that could go either way, I would leave that until you return. Now, if your heater completely died, and it's, you know, we're heading into winter, it's getting colder at night. If your heater's dead and you had to replace it, you just do. And then you would tell the tank sitter, I want you to watch the temperature of the tank. You know, let's say you have a very simple tank, it has a glass thermometer. You tell them it needs to be between 79 and 77 anytime you walk in the door. And if she sees it's 83, you want to be texted. You want to find out what's going on. You want, you know... Again, you're on vacation, or you're with family, or you're in the hospital. You may not be able to even respond, but at least they're letting you know what they've come across. If they can call you or the alternate phone number to kind of figure out a way to cool the tank down again or to raise the temperature of the tank up, that's what you want. You just don't want them to say nothing when they could have spotted something that was an issue. Okay? All right, let's see, anything else? Nope, that was everything on my list. So, um, <clears throat> we're coming up, we have about five minutes left on this stream. So let's open it up, you can talk about whatever you like. In the meantime, I wanna point out a couple of things for you um, while you're coming up with your questions. Follow me on Instagram, I love it when you do. And I've noticed some of you have been sharing your reef trace uh, water parameters. And I also am sharing mine, of course, which is I'm happy to do. I mentioned earlier the website is done. There are a few little tiny minor things we are still correcting, but 99% of the website is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, which is great. Critter ID is working great. Um, the, the articles, they're, they're vivid and beautiful. I love how this looks on mobile. If you've been pulling up the website on your phone, I want to point out to you, Let's see, let me load this really quick. And I'm going to switch my camera here for a second. Because we seem to do better on the other camera from my phone. So I'll do this one. You're all going to read my text as they come on my phone, I can tell. So if you're on Miller's Reef, you can turn it sideways and it will fit your screen better so you can scroll up and have a little more space, which is so awesome. I love that you can use it on mobile now. That was something that my, uh, my website has needed for years, and I'm very, very happy to get that done finally. What else can I show you on here? Well, you guys have already seen the tour of it. Go, go check it out on your own. Go check it on your tablet or go check it out on your, on your desktop or on your television, however you want to do that. I think that it's awesome, and I hope that you like it. Um, what else did I have? Something else I was going to tell you. What did I forget? Oh, yeah. I've got a fun project <clears throat> that I'm going to do later today. So, I've got this huge Christmas tree next to me right now. There's my tree. There's my light. Okay, so, i got this huge Christmas tree. And it's, it's a living tree. I picked it up at Costco, and it, uh, the guy swears it'll live until January, you know, the first week of January. So I have it in this base, and, you know, it's bolted in place so it won't fall over. And I watered it. And I've <laughs> I think it was a day. Maybe it was a day and a half because I've been, you know, 
doing a lot of stuff. But I tried to fill it up with more water yesterday. And I have this wine carafe, you know, holds a bottle of wine basically. And I filled it up with water and I poured it in and it was, there was still room in the base. So I went back to the sink and I stuck my head back in the tree. I have a flashlight and I'm pouring more water in the base. And then it's still not enough water. I had to get another bottle. That was three trips to the sink to get enough water to fill up this tree base. And I haven't even decorated the tree yet. It's literally a naked tree in a base and it's already a beating to water this thing. And I said, that is not gonna work for me. So yesterday it occurred to me, this Christmas tree needs a top off. <laughs> so I am going to be taking an ice cap uh, ATO kit and I'm gonna install it on my frag system because I wanna try it out, make sure it works right. And then I'm going to take my smart ATO micro and I'm gonna install it on the tree and it's gonna to top off my tree every day for the next six weeks. And uh, that's it, that's my whole story. I just, I'm gonna do that today, I'm gonna to install it. And I'm gonna hook up a, you know, like a bucket of water near the tree where I can refill the bucket and then it'll trickle in based on the ATO demanding how much water needs to be inside that base. And that is going to keep my tree watered so I can put the decorations around it and I can do my thing and not have to think about how am I gonna get water in there and not get water on everything underneath the tree. So I wanted to share that with you guys because I, I think it's kind of hilarious, but why not? Why not use an auto top off to keep your tree watered? All right, so <clears throat> let's see what you guys typed. Uh, Brant asked me, I'm still waiting to see uh, a Maxima Clam. When are you going to buy one? I think you need four. And he puts a smiley. I don't know when I'm going to buy a clam. <clears throat> I don't even know where I would put it right now. Obviously, I can move one or two things and make room. And there's always room for a clam. I haven't gotten one in a while, and uh, I do miss it. And I like the peacock blue color. That's my favorite. So, I don't know. Maybe next month. Maybe January. We'll see. <coughs> Some of you guys are cracking up at my ATO Christmas tree idea. I think it's going to be awesome. I love this tree, by the way. It's gorgeous. It was crazy. I went to go buy gas at Costco, and there was a guy outside of a huge semi-truck right by the pumps. And I asked him, you know, what are you doing out here? Because, you know, he said hello. And he said he was selling Christmas trees. And I said, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. It's Thanksgiving is tomorrow. And he said, we have these trees. So I, you know, I'm still pumping the gas in my car. And I'm like, all right, how much is a tree? And he said, 50 bucks. And I thought that was actually a pretty good deal because I believe every time I've seen Christmas trees, you know, obviously getting closer to Christmas, I thought I saw more like 80, 90, 100 dollars for a, a real tree. So then I asked him, I said, well, then I told him, look, I'm about to leave the country. I won't be back until the 8th. I'm going to buy it after that. And he says, well, if you don't get a tree now, you're not going to get one from us. We get one truck every year. This is it. Talk about high pressure sales, right? So I went inside. I was trying to get some new glasses ordered, and uh, that didn't work out. So I went and bought a tree instead. I walked out, got this giant tree. Uh, we went through his truck. He had quite a few. They're all wrapped with string around, so it looks like a pine cone. So you can't actually see what the tree looks like. But I saw one inside Costco that was wide open and gorgeous. And I said, yeah, I want one like that. So I got this guy. And my house smells like a forest. I love it. I, it's awesome. Last year, I had a Christmas, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas tree. It was really embarrassing, but I had to get something because my son was coming to visit, and I had nothing here because I was too busy working. And so I got this little tiny thing that's still alive because it was a potted tree. And I've got it in the back room, and it, it's not pretty, but it's alive because I don't kill anything. And uh, yeah, so got this awesome tree. I don't want a fake umbrella tree with all the lights already on it. That sounds sad. Okay, Nancy Campbell says, I need an ATO, and I'm going to cut off right there and say, yes, you do. She said, I just killed my corals in my 29 gallon with 1.030 salinity. Um, how did I do a water change without checking first? I have no idea, but I feel like I made a big mistake. I actually made it sound nicer than what she wrote. Um, always test your salinity of your water for the water change and your salinity of the tank. You want to make sure they match. You want your temperature, your pH, and your salinity to be the same. 
If all three are the same, you can change as much water as you like, and it will affect nothing in your tank. I always recommend measuring pH. That's super important. And I know that people think, well, why? But if pH is off, you have to add alkalinity. <clears throat> and a long time ago, there was a brand of salt that was distributed nationwide that, was, that had no alkalinity in it. It was a big disaster. And because I measured pH and I saw that it was crazy low, I was adding baked baking soda to my salt water and I got the pH where it belonged. What I actually did was I fixed the alkalinity that I didn't even know was missing. So my reef never even skipped a beat. It, no one, you know, people across the U.S. had huge and small reef tanks crashing and they were losing all their livestock because they were adding salt water with zero alkalinity or one alkalinity instead of seven, eight, nine. And that number is very important to your reef tank. But if your pH is where it belongs, the alkalinity is correct. So I always say measure pH. If you uh, don't have a pH probe, uh, I would highly recommend you buy one. Uh, man, I wish I told you this yesterday because there might have been a Black Friday sale for that. But maybe Cyber Monday. Look for American Pinpoint. It's a handheld device that has a single pH probe and you can put it everywhere. And that is a wonderful tool that I used uh, early in the hobby before I got a controller. And I would use it in the tank and then it would tell me on a digital, on a digital display, you know, 8.19. And then I would take it and I'd walk over to my barrel of salt water and I'd put it in there. And it would say 7.1. It's like, oh. So I added some baked baking soda and, that, and I stirred it up and I'd measure it again and now it's like 8.0. And I'd put in some more, and I would you know stir it up and measure again. It's 8.1, and I'd put in you know, another teaspoon and stir it up. And then you know, I measured, it was 8.2. I was like, okay, now they match. And what I had done is I'd fixed the alkalinity. So make sure those match. Uh, back to the ATO. An ATO will top off your tank automatically, like I mentioned last uh, live stream. And it really is the best tool to make your life easier. An ATO takes care of keeping salinity where it belongs all the time. Yes, it can wander based on how much water is coming out through your skimmer, but essentially it should stay stable. You're supposed to measure your salinity every week anyway, so it shouldn't really get away from you. Uh, the second awesome tool to own is going to be a waste collector for your protein skimmer. If you've never gotten one, find the money to get one, and then once you hook it up, you will realize how much better your life has become. ATO and waste collector, those are the two favorite tools I have on my tank. Uh, for making my life easier, and uh, bar none. I mean, they are really the most important critical things I could recommend to anyone with an aquarium. All righty. I don't see any questions. I'm going to wrap this up so this isn't a super long video for people to watch later. Thank you so much for paying attention and for tuning in. Next Saturday, there is no live stream because I'm going to be in Fiji, hopefully in the water, diving, looking at fish and corals, and filming it on my iPhone 6 Plus. And uh, then I will be gone for eight days. <clears throat> and when I come back, I arrive, I guess, on a Friday, which means I'll probably be zonked. I will attempt to do a short stream on that Saturday at 2 o'clock, um, assuming that I'm not on some crazy upside-down schedule, because Fiji is 19 hours ahead of us. I talked to a buddy. He's already there. You know, he can't wait for everyone to show up. And when I was talking to him, yesterday he told me it was saturday is that right yeah and i was like i'm talking to the future <laughs> i can't believe it it's the future tell me something i don't know so that was fun uh but yeah that'll be me in a week i won't be around for the live stream so in the meantime uh if you are watching this and you're one of my customers i am working on all the orders right now to get them out the door before i leave the country and if you are planning to buy anything please do so when i come back from the trip i have something to do and uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. I uh, hope you have a uh, you have the right plan in mind for your Christmas holidays because someone's got to watch your tank. And I hope all this information helped you a lot because you definitely want to plan ahead. You want them to know what to do. You want to be able to relax and enjoy your vacation, uh, your time with family, and not be stressing about your aquarium. All right, that's it, guys. Bye.